Okay, as we all know, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n raised to the nth power like this. This right here is equal to e, and this is just one of the definitions of the special number e, right? And if you guys want to see more uh, detailed explanation on this, you can check out my other videos. I will have the links to them in the description for you guys. But anyway, we have two limits questions on the spot right here. The first one, the limit as n goes to infinity of the same expression and then minus e right here. Take a guess, what's the answer for this one right here? I think you guys guessed it right. This right here is just equal to 0, okay? Because this right here approaches to e, and of course you have minus a solid e, and at the very end, you get 0. So that's good. However, let's take a look at the second one. The limit as n goes to infinity of the same expression, but this time, we multiply this by n, and then we will minus e times n. What do you think what the answer to this is? Maybe you see that, hey, this right here goes to e, so once again, this is like e times n minus e times n. So I shall have 0 for the final answer, isn't it? But if you just do this, let me tell you, you are making some technical mistakes. Unfortunately, this right here, it's not equal to 0. This is actually not the right way to argue what the answer is, okay? And I know many of you guys would like to try this before I show you guys the solution to this. So if you haven't already, please pause the video and try this on your own first. Now let me explain to you guys that how come we cannot draw any conclusion right here unless we do more work. First of all, we notice that both terms have the n now, right? It's okay, we can factor it out. And we'll see, this is the limit as n goes to infinity, and then we will have n times this, which is 1 plus 1 over n raised to n's power, and then minus e, okay? So it's just like that. Well, n goes to infinity. You see, right here, we will have infinity times the result of this parentheses right here, right? And we know this will go to e, and then e minus e is 0. So in the limit form, we put down infinity times 0. And once again, we're dealing with limit. And when you have this kind of form, we know it's indeterminate unless we do more work, right? And you may be wondering, how come this is e minus e? That's 0. 0 times anything shouldn't that be 0 already? But no, because this is not going to give you a solid e. So when you have this minus this solid e, this 0 is not a solid 0. You can just think about this 0 as a tiny number, uh, such as 0 0.000001. And then you multiply by this big number. In fact, we wouldn't know what would happen unless we do more work. So anyway, that's the idea. But now, here is the deal. This indeterminate form is not preferred because we cannot use Lapidot's rule right here. We like to have infinity over infinity or 0 over 0, right, for Lapidot's rule. So let's go ahead and look at this n right here. And by the way, in fact, originally you had the infinity minus infinity situation. I cannot draw conclusion on that either. It's bizarre, I know, but you, know, you actually have to be really, really careful. This is pretty counterintuitive. But anyway, I will bring this n down down so that I can make this infinity become 0 in the denominator, okay? And because I mentioned about we will be using Lapidot's rule, so instead of the n's right here, let me change all that to x, so I can legitimately put down the ddx for differentiation purpose. So this is the same as the limit as x goes to infinity. And once again, it really doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, we just care about the value for the limit. It doesn't really matter if you use n or t or x or y or whatsoever, okay? Anyway, this is on the top, 1 plus 1 over n raised to the nth power and then minus e over, you bring this n down down, it becomes 1 over n like this, okay? So now, you see, on the top, you still get that 0. On the bottom, you also get that 0. This is a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. So we can go ahead and say, because it's 0 over 0, we can use Lapidot's rule right here. And I will just go ahead and put this down, d, d, x. And I said I was going to use x. My mistake, I will put down x, OK? This is our x. Anyway, d, d, x, 
d dx. All right, now this is the limit as x goes to infinity. Yes, the bizarre part is, how can we differentiate 1 plus 1 over x to the x power? Well, the answer for that is, you can watch my other video because I did that for you guys already. In this video, I will just put down the answer for the derivative right here for you guys, okay? So, this right here will give us 1 plus 1 over x to the x power times negative 1 over x plus 1 plus ln of 1 plus 1 over x, okay? And then the derivative of minus e is just 0, so it doesn't really matter. And now this is pretty much it. On the bottom here, we will have the derivative of 1 over x, and that's going to be negative 1 over x squared, like that. And now what? Here is the deal. Now we have the limit of this times that divided by that, right? And by one of the product rule in limits, okay, this is the product rule in limit. We know this part goes to the finite number e, so we can actually split it apart. And hopefully this is going to give us a nice value so that we can you know, multiply e with this part right here and we can draw a conclusion that way, okay? But unfortunately, we couldn't do things like that earlier because if you split it, you get infinity times zero. Once again, that's an indeterminate form. And likewise, the very first part right there, infinity minus infinity, we cannot touch on that neither. So let's do it. Right here, let me just put this down. I will write down this part first. And then we will multiply this by the limit of this part. All right, now let's see. As I mentioned earlier, this right here gives us the nice number e, right? So our goal is to just figure this out. That's pretty much it. However, if you plug infinity into all the x right here, this is going to be approaching 0. Likewise, this is also going to 0. On the bottom, also going to 0. This is another 0 over 0 indeterminate form. But it's OK, because hopefully Laputo's rule will help us out, right? So I will just go ahead, differentiate this right here, and also differentiate the bottom as well. Once again, right here, let me just put it down. This is a 0 over 0, so I'm using Laputo's rule for this limit right here. And I will just put this down. This is going to be the limit as x going to infinity. And I will differentiate this in my head. Look at this as negative 1 times x plus 1 to the negative 1 power. Bring the power to the front. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, right? And don't forget to minus 1 to the exponent. So negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And the derivative of x plus 1 just 1, so the chain rule doesn't really matter right here. So all in all, this right here is going to give you positive 1 over the denominator square. Okay, so x plus 1 square. And for the second one right here, I am not going to differentiate this in my head because I actually have a video for you guys already. But I will tell you guys for the answer again, okay? So when you differentiate this, you get minus 1 over x times x plus 1, okay? And lastly, for this part, differentiating negative 1 over x squared, it's the same as saying, differentiating negative x to a negative 2 power, bring the negative 2 to the front, negative times negative 2 is positive 2, and then minus 1 to the exponent, so it becomes x to a negative 3, so that's over, right? So 2 over x to the third power, like that. And now, let's see if this is going to help us out. This is equal to, we have the e all the way in the front, right? So let me just put that down. And notice that right here, I have a 2 in the denominator. So this is that saying 1 times this over 2. So I can factor out the 1 half, right? So let me just multiply by 1 half already. And then I will put this down nicely. This is the limit as x going to infinity. And if you look at this part, on the top, it's just, well, this is pretty rational now. Let me just bring the 1 over x to the third power to the top, right? It becomes just x to the third power, like this, times this minus that. And I will open a parenthesis, 1 over x plus 1 squared. And then I will have to minus the other one, which is 1 over x times x plus 1, like this. And of course, we have to just combine this, right? So for this, I will just multiply by x here and here. And for this right here, I will multiply by x plus 1, x plus 1, okay? So this is going to be, we have the e in blue, 
over the 2 in red, and this is still the limit as x going to infinity. And let's see, here we have x to the third power times, if you combine the fractions, the bottom stays the same, which is x times x plus 1 square, and the top here is just x, and then distribute, distribute, right? Distribute the negative 1. So we will have minus x, minus 1, and you see this and that cancel out. So we just have a minus 1 here, okay? And you see that, okay, if you would like, you can make this a 2 and cancel this out. But all in all, this is seriously, well, this is equal to negative 1, but I'll show you anyway. e over 2 times the limit as x going to infinity. Okay, on the top, you have negative x squared over, on the bottom, seriously, depends on how you want to do it, you can multiply this out. This is x squared plus 2x plus 1. All in all, you just care about this term, this term. So negative x squared over x squared is just negative 1. So this is equal to e over 2 times this limit is just negative 1. And multiply everything <laughs> at the end of all the work, right? So we have negative e in blue over the 2 in red. Really, really surprising, right? The final answer is actually negative e over 2.